Hello, Perfect Death here, bringing you another game. This game is U-Boat. Got it for like 40% off for a Halloween sale. I was interested in playing another sub-simulating game after a while. I last played Silent Hunter 4, Wolves of the Pacific. This one, you're a German submarine. It's got a mix of the um, submarine elements from what you would expect with uh, some simulations. So I can like go into uh, manual modes and, and check around with things like that, which is pretty useful there. But it also has a, a crew management system to it as well. With the crew management, you have your different officers. In this case, I have five officers, and some of them have different skills. So I have like two technical guys. Um, this guy's my chief engineer. So his main job is that he will he will deal with the engines. So when I have him there, he reduces the fuel consumption of my engines, and he lets me go up to these higher speeds or else I would just be stuck going at this speed. So for example, um, you can see he's starting to get low on his, his stamina there, so I'll go put him, tell him to go to sleep, and then that blacks out these speeds here. Now this guy, he is the mechanic, but I've also assigned him to work on the engines as a lower priority. So whenever this guy goes to rest, he will hop over his main job is he will actually deal with the torpedoes. He'll load torpedoes. He'll heat. He'll warm the per torpedoes up so that you get rid of the dead rates. Um, you have our radio operator. He can also double as a medic. Um, he will go over to the radio station so I can tell him to listen to the radio. Or he's also really good at listening to the, the hydrophones. Um, the hydrophones only really work underwater, and to give an idea of why you would have these different things, currently I can only see this ring around me based on my uh, captain. He is on the top of the ship, and I've assigned him up there so that he will help these guys looking around. So these, everybody will try to spot. But when you go underwater and you're then only relying on a periscopes, you gain a lot of uh, visual range from your hydrophone. So you'll see a blue sight radius for the hydrophone detection. And that's actually really big. And it lets you also see things when um, your conditions are bad. So right now it's, it's like 90% foggy and it's also nighttime. So when we go and look around, you know, I actually turn off the searchlight now, just so that I'm not so easily seen. But yeah, it's so foggy, my, uh, my crew can't really see anything either. So I could use this time to get my captain to rest. And if I wanted to see if there's anything nearby, I could um, dive underwater and then turn on the hydrophones and then I can, I can actually hear things at really long distances you get a vague idea like it might say oh there's some propeller noises in this direction so then you can move over, the, over there and take a look I just got off of a mission where I had to drop off a spy over at the docks here and that was a pretty interesting one because um, after you drop them off you get an extra mission to cause the docks to go to alert to make a distraction and so I was able to sink a couple of uh, warships hiding out here and then there was just a swarm of patrol boats going all over the place and I had to hide um, there's a couple of ways you can get detected in this um, so there's visibility range you, know, you can see that right now there's a, like a 90% um, visibility reduction for me of enemies seeing me and also it's nighttime so there's another 60% there and it's a little bit a little cloudy 
I think most people would see me because of the noise. You can see I'm cavitating because of my speed. I've got my gyro compass and my diesel engines running. So that's all creating noise. And then there's some surface noise that's going counter to this. And then if they have radar, then they can see a certain amount of my hull. So I can do things like I can set my, my uh, depth. There's a couple of quick depths here, um, like decks awash, which would um, get it so that just my conning tower pops out so that you can still run your diesel engines. The uh, air will come in through there, but you can't, you'll have your hatches closed. So you will be running out of oxygen for the actual ship. And with that, it's kind of useful for just reducing your visibility while still running your diesel because your battery will eventually run out in that case. Um, there are some neat things you can do to boost your oxygen. Um, you have ventilation. If you turn on your vents, it'll recirculate the air better, which prevents the air from going stale. But then you also have an issue where one, that makes a lot of noise and it only works in um, for a certain amount of time until it assumes that there's just more carbon dioxide. So eventually you won't be able to rely on just recirculating your air when you're underwater. And it's also extremely noisy, so people will hear you very easily. So you can do things like um, shutting off your, your electric steering, you can shut off your gyro compass, you can shut off your engine, and you can also change your, um, your lights to go to a blue light and a blue light reduces your oxygen consumption. We're currently on a normal lighting, this white light, and that improves my discipline. Other things that improve discipline include stuff like your, your cooking. So you can go to your storeroom and you can move like foods into your, uh, from your storage room into your galley. I've got four types of food, which is a bit overkill. I'm currently not draining my discipline fast enough to have the uh, the four items per meal. But I've been making enough budget that I've been in just throwing in whatever food I can get my hands on and just stockpiling up food. So my current mission right now is to go over to this area, way over here, do a patrol, sink some trade ships, and then make money, I guess. Um, one of the things that has been a bit different for this one, um, when I was playing on the um, Wolves Pacific one, you had to deal with your, your torpedo math a little differently. Because in the American campaign, the uh, the American torpedoes were a bit unreliable when it came to impact on a 90 degree angle. So if my submarine was here, and let's assume that there was a ship coming down this route. If I had a 90 degree angle, right, so 90 degree angle would actually be right there. So if I was, let's just get rid of that one instead. If I had my ship here and the ship was coming along there and I fired a torpedo and it hit right there, you actually had a really high dud rate. Historically, early war American torpedoes had really bad dud rates because of a firing pin defect. Um, conversely, if you did the same thing, but instead of a 90 degree angle, you actually shot at a like 30 or a 40. So like if it was a 45 degree angle. So if you were sitting here or over here, that gave you um, two points that you would you basically want to shoot from. So as the ship traveled by, you wanted a 45 degree impact. And so then you would do these your math where you'd figure out its speed, its distance, its bearing, and then you would say, okay, I want to hit it at a 45 degree angle, so where would I need to 
shoot at. So if the ship was passing by here and I shot there, and it would run into it, or if I was over here and I'd like wait for the ship to be, you know, somewhere around there, and then I'd figure out the math for that. Now with the Germans, it you don't really have to do that, and it also the firing computer for the um, the Germans is a little different from what the uh, American firing computer was. There's a bit of historical stuff for that, but also different game developers implement these systems differently. So with um, with the U-boat, you only really need to get four pieces of information. So one is the, the speed, so how fast is it going. The other is the bearing, what direction it's going. And that direction is compass, which had me confused for a bit because in the American one you input it based on the bearing relative to your ship whereas this one is it uses the um, compass bearing so north south east west so you would you know get your compass thing you'd say okay if he's going this direction right then you would say he's going like 116 or if he was going from here down to there then you'd say oh it's he's 131 except um, you have to add so you'd be 90 180 and then you'd have to add sort of 180 on top of you have to do the math for for this direction once you go past that because it, it counts it clockwise so this would like this over here where it's a 10 degree it would actually be like a, a 350 bearing that you would do if he was going this direct from down here to up here so that was one thing I had to figure out. Um, one of the other things that I had to figure out as well was um, some of the, oh yeah, the, the other one was, um, oh yeah, that's right, the, uh, the speed. So there's, it's pretty reliable to use the, um, the speed measurement game gives you here where you measure with your periscope and you just wait for the ship to cross a line. An alternative way of, of measuring that I used to use a lot, which you didn't have to be up and have your periscope up because then people could detect you, is you could just mark. So you can mark at one point and then you would wait three minutes and then you'd say, okay, he's traveled there to there in three minutes and then you just measure that distance and you say okay he traveled that distance in 40 coal in that period of time and so with the american one you were using the empiric system so you could get a nautical miles off of that really easily whereas if you're running on a it's currently what am i mine set to mixed so it's kilometers to knots um, you could do metric, which is just kilometers and kilometers per hour, or you could go, you know, nautical miles, where it's miles and knots. So, so I could go back to that system where the you measure it that way. But I've been using the the games chronometer pretty well for doing that. Uh, maybe later on in the campaign because. What will eventually happen is we're just in 1941. Everything's going pretty easy for the German submarines. Um, later on, not so well. The um, British and the Americans start to bring out a lot more raid radio equipment. So um, the British ship over new designs for making miniaturized radars. And they start putting that onto planes. And then their planes fly around. and. They were able to like detect a submarine really easily. Even if you were submerged and you had a snorkel and you pop your snorkel up to suck air in while you're submerged, they sometimes were able to uh, see the snorkel and then drop depth charges on you. And they used to think that they were safe at night, where they would surface on the n at night time. But the the radars were really good at night at finding where the Germans were, and then they would wait until they were doing their, 
their dive run. Then they turn their spotlights on and strafe the submarines. So things get pretty rough later on in this game, which I haven't got to that yet. So we'll see eventually what that ends up being like. For now, the, these are the, the happy years, as the Germans called it. Where you the uh, the transports are largely unescorted. You know, even when I did the uh, this uh, Cardiff raid, well, it wasn't a raid. I I turned it into a raid because there was just there was these big transport fleets going in and out of here like crazy, and so as I was leaving, I just kept sinking transport ships and diving down and hiding next to the, uh, the surface of the of the ocean as the uh, patrols pass by because once you do submerge you have a sonar signature and you can get rid of a lot of that by hugging the uh, hugging the bottom of the ocean so like right here it's a bit too deep my uh, ship would crush but as you get close to the surface you can see over here it's like a hundred there and in this place here it was like 20 so I could basically just sit on the uh, floor of the water and get like an 80% reduction to my sonar signature so even if a ship with sonar came by he couldn't see me so uh, I got to learn a fair bit about sneaking around when I did that so that was good practice so this will be a bit of an easy run. I'm currently doing this patrol because it'll give me 30%, 33% reputation. And the way that it works in this game is that you can get some rewards for reputation points. Once I hit 100, I'll get one point of reputation. And I need that to expand my, um, my crew here because right now I'm at five officers. I can get a sixth officer and I do have a sixth officer I got him from doing this mission so now I need to get a spot in my crew for him and that would be nice because he is an officer type and he would be able to be on the lookout so when my captain is sleeping he can be on the lookout or he can be doing navigation when this guy's sleeping so three officers would be pretty good instead of just two so that I don't have to worry about juggling these two guys here and trying to get them properly rested so there's some pretty interesting stuff that you can do there with how you design that um, i also did a mission which boosted my research speed for a t3 electric torpedo and that's gonna let me research it ahead of time whenever i decide to I might do that as my next research. I'm currently researching toilets, which will make it so that my crew don't get really pissed off from being underwater for too long. Because as it turns out, because um, I think it's like over here that the toilet is, um, when you're submerged, the toilet doesn't work because the water pressure will push everything back out. So it only works when you're uh, on the surface. And so I figured, well, might as well. I've researched, you know, expanded um, battery because this is your electric engine. So I made my electric engine better so that I have more battery capacity. And so I figure, why not? I want to get my... Um, my ship gradually upgraded over time and I've also got to level up my crew a fair bit so you can see they get like skills here um, when they hit this level I made my captain better at spotting stuff and that's just the one that they force you to get and then with like this guy here, because I was using his hydrophoning so much, I decided to give him the improved hydrophone. So he just recently got that one. So I'll be putting him to work there. Since he's unassigned, but he is a radio officer. But yeah, 
We can do medical training. He also has cook. This one's somewhat random, I've noticed, with different games. They, they have a different second skill when they start out. So, like this guy here. My captain, this skill, is sitting over here. And this guy had to learn cooking, so and I made him the deck gunner. So one of the neat things is that, you know, eventually you can just decide not to use your torpedoes. I currently, how many torpedoes? I have, in the back, you have one torpedo launcher, and I then have a spare torpedo to load, so I have two torpedoes in the back. And then all the way over here, do, 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 do. You've got four torpedo tubes here, and then another eight are in reserve. So you have quite a bit of torpedoes, though I actually used up most of them in my previous run, so you can burn through them pretty quick. But you can get rid of the dud rates by warming them up, which is pretty nice, compared to when I did the, uh, the USA campaign in, in another game. I don't know how historical that is, but it does make it so you have an incentive to um, pre-heat your torpedoes before you go into a fight. Or else you'll be fighting cold torpedoes and they might just bounce. So uh, Maybe I'll do a recording of an actual torpedo strike. In my next video but for now that'll be it take care